For those who know what's right. For those wedded to the machines in their bedrooms, their studios, their best friend's garage or basement. For those who negotiate with the system every day to make time for the music that matters. For those who get in debt to fund the fight against the mundane. For those who stay true to their cause even in the face of income and fame through compromise. For those who feel the power of every beat. For those who keep their minds open. For those who encourage and support those pursuing their personal dream. For those who sacrifice relationships to make sure the music is heard. For those for which the music is a lifetime, not a pastime. This is Bass Agenda. 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 This is Oliver Way, and you're listening to Bass Agenda. Yeah. I want to know how deep is your love? How deep do you feel? And if it's real, not as in it was real at the time, but as in I wish this could last forever. Sometimes when love escapes and disappears and lots of fears, so many things in your head, the tears fall and turn, your eyes flush out red. Sometimes when love escapes and disappears, then lust appears So many things in your head The tears fall and turn, your eyes blush out red Welcome to Base Agenda. This month, the show is completely dominated by one man who's done an awful lot. One half of the Detroit Grand Pubers, DJ, solo producer, remixer, booking agent, founder of uh, EPM, distribution and promotion company, Robert Hood's manager for over 20 years. I am, of course, talking about Oliver Way. Got some great stories to tell and some extremely good music for you as well. A lot of techno in the first uh, hour or so. And then we're going to slip into more abstract stuff, some electro, hip-hop, experimental stuff as well. And in part two of the show, we've got a mix by him as well, which I'll tell you a little bit more about later on in the show. Had a lot of fun with this one. Enjoy the tunes and enjoy what Oliver's got to say.
maybe 13, 14, and I actually got was first getting into reggae and dub and dancehall music was really kind of what I got mm-hmm. into first. Right. Um, I think that was just mainly because friends I was around, you know, I was hanging around uh, Tottenham a lot, and a lot of my friends were from that area, and there was a lot of reggae and a lot of dancehall and a lot of dub music being played, and I kind mm-hmm. of really got into that, yeah, um, yeah. which probably got me into the bass, you know, to be honest, you know, right. dub, obviously. Sure. Um, so I was quite heavily into that for a good couple of years, and they were the first parties I actually even went to. Um, were mm. a lot of kind of illegal dancehall parties, believe it nice. or not. Mm. Um, I kind of remember quite a few around sort of Walthamstow area that I'd go to quite regularly, sort of uh, basement parties as well with mm. friends. And then from there, I remember there was a lot of dance music on the radio, even on Capital Radio and stuff. You know, there was a lot of mixed shows going on you know i mean as cheesy as it is i don't know if you remember there was this uh, radio show by i think pat and mick or something like that or mick and pat and they had this oh. radio show on capital radio yes. and it, it was all kind of pop music but they also threw in a lot of like you know at the time you know teddy riley stuff and it was more kind of r b dance stuff but they were doing mixes i don't know if they were doing the mixes or they had an engineer doing them but they had kind of mad mashups and edits and stuff like oh, that okay. of kind of more R and B dance music. Oh, that takes me back. How old are you, man? What that takes me back. I'm nearly, I'll be. I'm 49. I'll be 50. Uh, the end of the oh, okay. So you're a year, a year and a bit ahead of me. So I'm. I'm, four, I'm So I grew up in Essex. Oh right. Um, yeah, and me and a mate used to listen to that show, and they used to put, but they play stuff like. They play quite a lot of twelve-inch versions of stuff. Yes, exactly, up. exactly. Like extended mixes, and then they do. They, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. I think if I remember right, it was like a Friday night. They had this master mix session, and it was all just one big mix mashed up. And they played like yeah, all these kind of different edits and different versions of like it could be like Janet Jackson or yeah. the Burt and all this kind of stuff. So that kind of really kind of got my interest. Not so much of the music, even though the music was fine, whatever it was called, it was dance music. But um, yeah. it was more the the, the the mixing and the edits and what the, how yeah. the fuck are they doing that, you know? And yeah, then yeah, yeah. making these things join together. And that's how I kind of got more into. I guess that side of it, even before kind of thinking, oh, electronic music, you know, I was really interested in the way these people were doing these edits. Was, um, that, Pat, was that Pat Sharp? Yes, I think it was. was I think it, it was Nick Brown and Pat Sharp. Big fucking mullet was. That's that, that, it, that's that. it. <laughs> yes, so cheesy, man. <laughs> I don't know if they're still around anymore or not, but man. yeah. that i started thinking right how the fuck are they doing that and then started obviously like everybody else getting into trying to do little tape edits you know pause button and mm, yeah. i had a double deck tape player and trying to make little mixes of my own you know with with this you know off the radio that's it yeah, yeah. and you start there and you start getting the scissors out then you know and then 
by cutting up some tape and all that, you know, um, trying to make your own kind of master mixes. And mm. so that must have been around, like, I guess, the mid, mid late, late 80s, mid 80s, 87, 86, I don't know when that was. So yeah, that kind of got my interest. And then obviously hip hop was mm. blowing up around that time as well with, like I said, Public Enemy and yeah. Beastie Boys were also coming out. So I kind of getting into that. And then, mm. um, and then I think off the back of that, really, I got into hip house, you know, which is Doug Lazy and all that sort of stuff. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. when it kind of started going into more of the electronic dance music as we know it today, I guess. I wasn't actually initially in the Poobers. They started it without me. The first album was actually nothing to do with me. You know, it was him and Andy Toff. I was working at a promotion company called Future Tracks in 2000, and that's where I met Jonas and Addy. Okay. And on the, I was working with them. On the side, I was running a booking agency. Hmm. I was booking quite a lot of Chicago guys, um, uh, like Robert Armani, K. Alexi, hmm. and uh, Robert Hood already then mm. and then that's when Paris came about you know the Poobas had just launched this new album uh, Funk All Your and um, they were looking for an agent uh, I think we'd been working with I'd already been working with their manager at the time which okay. is a guy called 
Oh, John Lane, who ran a record label called... Oh, shit, what was his record label called? Oh, man, that's going to drive me mad. Intuit Solar. Oh, OK. That was it. Intuit Solar. Yeah, they were releasing a lot of stuff from DJ Sort. He'd done some stuff with... Uh, I think do with uh, Doppel Effect um, and some of the Detroit guys, Godfather, mm, those mm. kind of guys. And so Detroit Grand Fubas, he was working with and managing at the time as well. He'd done a release with Paris already, a solo release with Paris under the name Black Future, I think. Or it might have been just Paris the Black Foo, sorry. And then, so yeah, he contacted me, wanted me to do the bookings for the Fubas, met up with them. And then soon after that, um, they decided to split. You know, Andy wanted to focus more on being a studio engineer and didn't want to go touring and didn't want to right. do any of that kind of lifestyle. And, and Paris was really into that. And he was also a mm. DJ. He wanted yeah, to continue yeah. doing that. So for a while, I think for a few months, he, I was booking him do, as the Poobers, but he was doing it alone. Mm. But then quickly realized that he can't do it on his own because he's also a much of a front man. You know, he's a vocalist, he's a performer, he's an entertainer, he's a real good laugh. He likes to talk to the crowd. and. Yeah, yeah. What he was doing as the Poobers was really interacting with the crowd and if he was behind there focusing on trying to just get the, the track to play, he was losing that kind of entertainment factor that he had with the crowd. Makes so sense. I said, you know, let me let me help you out, let me come on the road with you mm. and, and um, you know, do the show with you. So mm. that's kind of where that it, that started. Oh, really. Okay. Oh that makes sense man. Yeah, yeah. No, cool. So, yeah, I yeah. interviewed him a while back now. Yeah. He's and, a funny uh, yeah. guy. He's a lovely guy. I was in stitches for half of that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's great, man. He's really good. Guy. I don't know if he told you the name Poobers, even though. I mean, even the name itself is quite funny, really. I mean, um, a grand Poober is, is taken from the Flintstones. It's um, the is Flintstones. It? <laughs> yeah. It, Fred Flintstones' bowling team was called the Grand Poobers. Shit, I don't think we talked about <laughs> the name, man. That's hilarious. Well, there you go. You know, so that's where it comes from. And also a pooba being, or is it jack of all trades, master of none, is what a pooba definition. Well, that's, that's kind of what I had it in mind as. Yeah. Which again, which again you know, covers the kind of the exactly. nature of what you guys do. Totally. at the top of the show in the second part of this week's episode we have got a uh, guest mix from Oliver Way fantastic electro mix that he put together played out live back in November last year at an event put together by Nur Nor Nacht and RX Mode I've definitely said RX Mode right but I don't know about the rest of it <laughs> uh, yeah great great night that one uh, there was Dave Clark uh, RX Mode Originally, it was going to be Vivo, but of course, uh, unfortunately, Vivo passed away. So, uh, yeah, Fern stepped in. Amazing DJ. Great night of electro. An event to keep an eye on. I'm going to have a full set from Oliver for you a little bit later on. <laughs> Oh, 
What's up, y'all? This is Paris the Black Fool of the Detroit Grand Poobahs, and you're listening to Base Agenda. Nine years ago, record shopping with a lot of the time, we decided to name all Robert Hood music at the time was just considered ant music because it, we could just picture ant building, you know, like a <laughs> like a, a soundtrack to like a, a natural National Geographic thing. You could, it just if you watch the ants, they're wandering around and, and building shit, and as they're making their nets, mate, you can play Robert Hood music to that, mate. It fits perfectly. Building, building, building ant music, mate. Yeah. And that was what we considered Robert Hood music was ant music, and. Um, and then, then I went to go down and see him. He was playing at the end uh, at the time, and, and I went up to well, his wife was always with him, you know. So I went down to speak to his wife, and we started chatting away. And she gave me a promo of one of the new um, implant releases, and, and I said, mm. you know, I'd love to try to see if I could organise some gigs for you. So um, that was that, really. You know, Robert yeah. was DJing, went off to carry, carry on partying, and uh, mm. and then she'd give me her phone number. So I gave him a call like, like the following week, and you know, we started organising some bookings together, and nice. kind of went on from there, really. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and nice. that was like I don't know, that was twenty years ago.
for them we've got more recently uh, Wake Up oh yeah uh, with Ben Long good old Benny boy he's a good friend of mine yeah, you've and, done uh, a lot with that you've done a lot with Ben haven't you over the years? yeah he's just a really good mate you know I've known for ages you know it even goes back to when I was doing bookings I was doing the bookings for Space DJs and Bandula was still around at the time as well. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, but we know, you know, we hung out and we knew each other, but it wasn't really that, you know, necessarily close to him. But he moved to Belgium. Um, so I said, oh, I went over to visit him, and um, yeah, obviously we jumped in the studio, and uh, mm-hmm. that was the result, really. That was mm-hmm. the first time we jumped in the studio together. Yeah, it's nice, um, man. And that really, I don't know what. I'm shit when it comes to naming and explaining sounds. <laughs> don't worry. But that high pitch thing that it's like. Oh yeah, the ball like a submarine sound. Yeah, yeah, that's it's like a yeah, really high yeah. pitch kind of fucking radar or sonar. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a sound I, I really that. love a lot, you know. And I said, right, we've got to get that sound in there because you know it's also used a lot on quite a lot of Chicago records. That sort of that mm. radar sound. And so that's just a sound I really like. I yeah, I love that when the track shut, when the track kind of comes to the end and the beat stops, but that keeps going for another. Cut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes exactly. Nice for a transition as well. But. Yes, I mean that was a great session that I had. We did two tracks that night, and uh, I still remember mm. it. It was a lot of fun. A lot of drinking involved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the creative juices flowing. Exactly. <laughs> He's got quite. I got a lot of modular background as well. He really knows how to use that, and I have no idea, but I'm interested in it. He's just great. He had this. He's got this modular bay that is just fucking sick. So he'd sit there tweaking all these crazy sounds, you know, from that. Yeah. And uh, and I'd be sitting there on my drum machine and on and, and Ableton and stuff and uh, just recording mm. it all in, basically. And then we start, yeah. once we just record a whole load of shit, basically, and then just sit there and just start going through all different sounds and mm. trying to get an arrangement together on something. Mm. But he's really good at that stuff. I, I said, I, I'm starting to learn it a little bit, but it's such a rabbit hole to go down, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. The gear, and uh, he's great at it. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I get, always come up with these crazy sounds with him whenever I get into the studio with him. Wait. I don't know why I suddenly got fascinated with one of these Luke Slater tracks. I mean, mm. it's an old track, uh, Planetary Assault System track about, about on Peace Frog called Surface Noise. And it doesn't do anything, man. This is brilliant. But yet it doesn't get boring. And, and mm. I was just sitting there thinking, how is it that he's doing that? Like, yeah. Where it's it like just, 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, in fact, both tracks are 10 minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. so long. And it, yet it just keeps your attention. Mm. It doesn't get boring. It's so hypnotic and it's so kind of just and ca- captures mm. your attention. And I was like, how the, how the fuck is he doing that, man? So I kind of really sat there and <laughs> like a geek and evaluated every little bit of it and listened to it over and over and over again and I kind of figured out how he was doing, what he was doing. I said, I want to do something like that, mm. you know, and that is kind of how that track came about. It, it just was just, I just wanted to have a track that just kept going and going and going and just kind of transitioned mm. and, and moved along. And then obviously I had to put a different twist on it and I got Domgi, who was a saxophone player in Poobas at the time. Um, yeah, that works. And to really put, well. put some saxophone on it, and it came out really good.
Dave Clark and you're listening to Bass Agenda. happy with that and Engine Room was just because I named it like that because it was named after a friend of ours that passed away right around that time as well it's kind of a bit of a, an ode to him you know it works as well because there's quite a lot of kind of I was listening to it again this morning and I was thinking this kind of Engine Room has got some quite kind of mechanical yeah sounds yeah. going on in there as well it's it's it kind of absolutely yeah, it's like it chugging that. along <laughs> yeah 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 and it's 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 having listened to surface noise which i hadn't heard for years actually with until mm. yeah man nice you really see the cool. resemblance i guess there yeah. well that. as you say it's that tech because i look at well, particularly when i'm putting a show together somebody chooses a 10 minute track and i'm like oh shit you know we're gonna have, where are we gonna cut this but actually some tracks you just have to fucking let it run don't you <laughs> yeah exactly and it's one of those <laughs> and, and, they're, and they're both well engine room and and surface noise both tick that box man i think so so when it comes to like making your own music, man, when did that? I mean, you were saying about tape edits and that. So I'm guessing DJ came first, as you said. Yeah, DJ came first. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, 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 way first. And then I just it's just a natural progression, I think. Really, you know, I mean, studio setup. So I remember I did a even mm. did a small production class. Oh God, and that would have been I want to say 95, 96 around that time. And at the time, it was just. Mm-hmm. The production class just basically consisted of understanding an S900, you know, you couldn't afford these keyboards and stuff, you know, that, no. you know, so an S900 sampler was about the maps you could do, you know. I even remember actually having a DJ mixer as a chip. My, one of my first DJ mixers was a Gemini and it had a, mm. a little, third, I think it was like a three or five second little sample button that you could smash, oh, you yeah. know, as you could play the record and you hit record and it would record a little sample of the record, you know, and you could then yeah, keep repeating yeah. it. I then started working with a friend in Leighton Stone who had a, a bit mm. of a better studio set up and kind of knew a bit more what he was doing. Yeah, he was he, he was the kind of first person I started making tracks with. Um, I'm trying to remember mm. what his name was now. Uh, anyway, but he also helped me produce uh, the first release I did, which was on this label I set up called Urban Substance Records. Mm. And um, did my first release on there. I think, I can't remember now, 97, 98, something around there. Now, was that... No, it wasn't, was it? I'm just trying to think. So you had, cause, yeah, because you had the release um, electronic sockets. When was that? That yeah. was after that. Oh, no, that, that's, that is that's, the, that's the one. That's the first. Oh, that one. is the one.
So that was the first solo release I'd done, and he helped me do that. I actually had done a collaboration with him prior to that, but that was kind of under his own name. Yeah, Urban Substance Records, which I set up with a guy called Jason Denham, uh, which was a promoter in Dublin. Okay. At, at the time, he was doing these regular nights down in the basement of the Clarence Hotel, which was owned by U2, actually. And that's uh, that record, the uh, Electronic Sockets Part 1, is a split with Claude Young, is that right? That's right, yeah. He did one side, I did the other side. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Man. yeah. yeah. So how, how did that come about? Because, I mean, obviously, he's... He's a bit of a well, legend. <laughs> totally. Well, he was playing at the at the club night a lot, so the label was meant right. to be a kind of um, showcase for the people that were being booked at the night. Yeah, really cool, man. I enjoyed that. Is that why you picked it as one of your favourites? Because it was like, obviously... Yeah, because it meant a lot to me, you know? Yeah, because you said to pick some tracks that were meaning something to me, and sure. that was one because it's the first one, you know? Yeah, yeah. Kind of the first moment where I thought, yeah, I'm enjoying this. Uh, it's something I don't want to continue doing. talked about surface noise but where, where did you come across that can you do you remember who oh man you i don't or? know I think all the stuff were coming out on peace at that time was just all hits you know for me yeah. anyway i was playing it i was playing everything on that label at that time yeah you know uh well, i mean i think you know they had a quite a slew of releases they were fancy sort systems and like right early on mm. um but yeah up until i guess they decided to stop releasing techno which would have been like I guess the mid two thousands. Everything was coming out. They were doing it was great, you know. And um, yeah, they went into some really weird stuff after that, didn't they? They went into sort of folk, didn't they? You know, I think yeah. they had an accidental hit, and then I think they thought, hold on a minute, <laughs> this is making a lot more money than all these other all these other releases. But up until then, yeah, they were I mean, everything. Everything coming out on Peace Folk was great. Mm. You know? Yeah, so, and Luke Slater did quite a lot on there, didn't he? He did. Yeah, I mean, some of his biggest hits, Booster, that was on there. Mm. Um, and everything on all that early Peace Fog stuff, uh, all the Palanchi Soul Systems on that label are all great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's the only reason I got that because I was just buying everything on that label at that time. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. One of those where you buy it blind kind of thing. Totally. And especially yeah. Luke Slater, you know, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. 
might be worth just doing a little little bit on EPM quickly, just let people know. Yeah, that, sure, what, absolutely. What's, what's what? Some people will know, others won't. Um, yeah, yep. So, the, was it yourself and Jonas founded yep. the company? M myself and Jonas Stone started it in 2001, January 2001. Um, yep. We were both working at this promotion company at the time called Future Tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, which was based out of Finsby Park. Addy was working there as well at the time. Um, okay. So we decided, well, you know, me and Jonas, why don't we try and set up something together? He'd focus on the promotion, I'll keep focusing on the bookings. Mm. So yeah, we decided to go, go at it on our own, see what would happen, you know? Mm. And again, that was January 20, 2001. Um, mm. That went really well. Um, mm. There was a lot of good uh, labels that were still going strong, selling vinyl. So that went, was going great. Um, mm. As things started to peter off there, the digital age coming in, um, promotion budgets started getting less. Mm. So we ventured then at the time, um, my now wife, Mel, mm. um, had been at ADE actually, and started oh. talking to me about, she, she comes down and says, I was in the bar with Jonas, obviously, mm -hmm. and she'd, she'd actually gone to it, actually listened to a, a panel <laughs> while we were sitting in the bar. She comes down, she's like, I've just been on this panel, they're talking about this thing called digital distribution, you know, and digital music. And we're like, mm. what the hell is all that about? You know, and this is like, must be around 2004, something like that, maybe even 2003. Right. And obviously nobody knows anything about digital at this point, you know, we're yeah, like, what yeah. the hell is all that about? So she started looking into it a bit more and, you know, started getting some research onto it and said, look, you know, maybe this is something that could be interesting to bring into EPM. Mm. You know, at the time, as I said, the PR was dipping down because I said the labels had a lot less money to the vinyl yeah. sales were already starting to dip. Yeah. And, you know, there was these, you know, iTunes was beginning with the iPod, if you remember back then, you know, the whole digital music pretty much has come about, I think, because of iTunes wanting to sell iPods. Um, and yeah, so now we're doing, now, you know, throughout the years, things have, you know, as a company, you've got to keep transitioning to stay, stay ahead of the game a bit and kind of move with the times. Yeah. So. Sure. Now we landed up doing, we still do digital distribution, obviously. I've stopped doing bookings, but I'm doing uh, publishing now mm. at EPM. Right. right. Um, and Jonas and Addy still doing promotion, but more focused on sort of playlists and stuff like that, you know, and radio shows as well. Martian track, man. I'd forgotten about this track. It's just oh man, so killer, mental. <laughs> I know it's thick, isn't it? I mean, that's the first one Planet release. Was that the first one? Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. And that's why I found out about that as well. I mean, I had no idea about this label at all. Um, Talk about making know, an entrance, then. Jesus. Yeah, and I actually went into a record shop. It was I think even remember the day I got it because it was that like whoa. I was at. Um, yeah. Oh, the, one of the record shops in Soho, I think Ambient Soho or something like that it was called and okay. might have been Sister Ray, I think that's in Soho as well and I just said oh, like yeah, you yeah. know I want to get some music, some new shit, just hit me with some new shit and they just gave me a pile of records as they did back in the day you know in a record mm. shop they just pull out a bunch of new shit and that was in there and I was like fuck me, what the hell is that? Yeah, it is crazy, isn't it? And it yeah. doesn't fucking let up either, does it? It doesn't, man. And there was, especially at the time, it was there was nothing like that, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. really, really cool track. That there was some just some new sounds, really. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, definitely an influence. It's a really noisy one too, isn't it? It's yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah, it's got that, that sort of high frequency noise coming through it, you know? Yeah, it's like tinnitus, but done well. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. Great track, great track. I love it. A great release. Yeah, no, the whole thing's fantastic. I think, that was the, I think that that one or the second one that came out after that then was the first record I ever had that played from the inside outwards. Yeah, oh, right. I've never seen that before. fucking essential it's like oxygen the world's dying of a thousand heart attacks we 
heal them up. It's a goddamn public service what we do. It's not, that's, not, that's the only reason to make music. Music, 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 music. Yes, the rhythm, the rebel. Without a pause, I'm lowering my level. The hard drama, where you never been, I'm in. You want styling? You know it's time again. D, the enemy, telling you to hear it. They praise the music, it's time to play the lyrics. Some say no to the album, the show. Bum rush the sound. I made a year ago. I guess you know. You guess I'm just a radical. Not on sabbatical. Yes, to make it critical. The only part of your body should be part of it too. Pass the power on the hour from the rebel of you. Hey, yo, Chuck, man. I don't understand this, man. Yo, you got to slow down, man. You're losing them. Radio. Suckers never play me. All the mix. They just don't okay me now. No one they grow. When the clock in my zone is no sneaking and taking everything now. such an amazing time when that came out as well because i think i remember them playing at brixton academy or brixton fridge or something like that i mean oh, yeah. there was such an energy around the music at that time beastie boys had come out as well around that mm. time too and there was just such a an atmosphere you know in the music scene in general you know mixed yeah. up that with the dance music as well you know there was such a hedonism about this kind of new music coming through um, you know yeah i remember it really well i mean it was such a great time yeah definitely unique time i think yeah way. absolutely really. absolutely I don't, I don't think hip-hop's ever going to feel like that again no 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 i don't think even probably maybe even dance well yeah no you're right you're right you absolutely. know we've gone off in such a into a commercial area now where you know it's just i don't think you're ever going to get that hedonism back into the sound again no. it'll be something else there'll still be that that underground sound always coming up, but it's probably going to be something else that we don't know about necessarily right now, or, you know, yeah. when we do know about it, then it's probably mm. past. Hank Shockley uh, came on stage with you guys, is that right? Yeah, that's right. That was a really nice surprise, you know? I mean, it was... Um, Unplanned. Totally unplanned and didn't even know he was going to be there, you know? Nice. And so it was at Meadham, you know, this conference they used to do, it's not there anymore, in, at Cannes in the south of France. And so he was playing, I think he was... I don't know if he was DJing after us or before us, I can't remember, because his brother Keith is into, was into dubstep at the time, and so he was DJing, and I think Hank might have been emceeing. Okay. Anyway, um, we met him backstage before we performed, just got on, started chatting, and you know, just shooting the shit, basically, and um, mm. yeah, so we went on to play, and I think, I, don't, I didn't know he was going to do it, but uh, I think maybe Paris had just said, yeah, of course, go ahead. 
doing one of the songs that was mm. kind of more of a hip hop based song. He just jumped on stage with us and grabbed the microphone and just started, you know, going off with Paris. It was really cool. Oh, man. Yeah. That sounds really, amazing. Yeah, That's real legend. Cool. I mean, what a legend he is. Yeah, man. I mean, God, talk about the Midas touch. Music. Yeah. Jesus. Unbelievable. Terminator X. Dreams on Plastic. Yeah, really cool. Obviously, it's a bootleg, you know, um, on his Bones Break series. This kind of was a good memory for me, really, because, you know, it was a... I think he put it out when I was living in New York at the time, so this was around 92. And um, it was just a track that was played a lot in New York, and mm -hmm. it's got that great beat down to it, which at the time, again, in New York, was really popular. <laughs> find out what it was and and, right. and get my hands on it as well mm. because i didn't know thank you at the time um a mate of mine was playing it a lot and it's one of those moments you know where you're in a record shop and all of a sudden you just think 
put it on and Oops, that's the one there it is oh yeah you no know? and so it was like yes <laughs> i got that man <laughs> I, love, I fucking love those moments man. so yeah, uh yeah and then after that you know i went on to actually you know frankie was the first person i ever started booking when i started oh booking. really okay yeah and then and then his brother had a mix no i love that that track is really good i love the female vocal sample in that is um yeah just uh, yeah something yeah. It's such a funky track, man. It really all is. The, all the bones. Well, I say all of them. I don't think I've got all. I've got a lot. I interviewed Frankie. God knows when that was. Oh, really? Yeah, quite a long time. Well, he, he's... I'm trying to think. He was releasing the latest... Well, at that point, it was the latest Bones Breaks. Might have been, like, 18. Bones Breaks 18. Oh, right, because like yeah, he restarted it, didn't he? So, yeah, that's a big tune. That's a really... I mean, you know, that's a really great track. I love it so much. Really cool. And a lot of good memories on that. He chose another classic, man. This is amazing. Body Mechanic, Quadrant 6. Oh, mate, what a tune. Fucking hell. That's amazing. It's such an amazing track, man. Yeah. I mean, it still sounds great today. I always play that track, man. It's, I mean, it went, and it's even for what is it, like, eight, like 82? Something yeah, like that, man. Like, yeah, yeah, it's early stuff, yeah. So good, so good. You yeah. know, again, Arthur Baker and John Roby, it's like these two are just, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, as as great as other duos like John Lennon and, uh, <laughs> and Paul McCartney or Jeff Mills and Mike Banks, you know. Yeah, John yeah. Robey and Arthur, and Arthur Baker were just sort of amazing together. This is DJ Overdose, and you are listening to Pace Agenda. somebody do you kind of bring the same thing to each collaboration i mean are you kind of the specialist in i don't know the drum no not really well different? 
Um, I'll say I'll say drums definitely is something because I used to be a drummer back when I was really young, just for for a couple of years anyway. I learned okay. to play the drums, so that is something I really enjoy a lot. Mm. Um, but really, nothing specific. I might have some ideas that I just started before, you know. That yeah. I just um, I want to do something with that. I don't know what, you know. It could be just some crazy sounds, you know. And then depending on you know, where I'm going to work with, and maybe I'll say, oh, look, this might be quite nice to do together with him, you know, mm, and mm. finish up something like that, you know, which yeah, is how yeah. the, the one I did with Danny started, you know, mm. Danny Rodriguez, you know, and that was yeah mm. piano sound that we had. I think I, I had just sitting around. I think it was my dad even that played the piano or something when he came to visit me once and was just hacking of banging around on, a, on the keyboard and I was just recording him because I like doing that sort of thing a lot. If I've got somebody who could play an instrument and they're in my house, then I'll smash them into the studio and say, right, let's just, you know, I'll just mm. lay down some beats and just play anything and I'll just record it. It doesn't have yeah, to be yeah. anything, you know, and then you never know when that's going to come in handy, you know. Mm. So nice, it, so you like to catch your stuff in the raw kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then see what happens with it. And I think that I think the track started out that way, you know, and... Um, mm. So this is uh, First Strike we're talking about, yeah. Danny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, first Act, sorry, I called it First Strike, but it's actually called oh, first, first Act. Act. No, you're right, I'm reading your email. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it wrong myself, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> right, man, don't worry. They did it wrong myself. Um, but yeah, that's how that one came about, you know. So it really doesn't, it really do, I really don't know what's going to happen, you know. Mm. Um, and that one particularly, yeah, I just had that sitting there, this idea of a track, and, um, you know, I really liked it. I, had, I knew there was something there, um, but I didn't know how, where to go with it. And Danny, as I said, I think it's you in the email, you know, he's got a great collection of keyboards mm. and, and he's a bit of a keyboard player himself. Mm. And um, he's just great at playing melodies, you know, yeah. uh, and strings. Yeah, and that's so, a lovely track, man. It's a really nice Yeah, it's something really different, vibe. you know. Yeah, yeah. That's how that came about, and it just happened in, within hours, really. You know, mm. you know what it's like. Sometimes it just goes perfectly. Yeah. You know, I think within three hours that was done. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. That's, that's, that's yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah. It's good when it flows like that, though, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. The vibe yeah, was there yeah. straight away. You know, he got it straight away. He started yeah. jumping on the keyboard, and I'm like, yes, that's it. Go. <laughs>
So is it viral, viril, viral? I think his name is Vril. 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 Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I love this shit, man. It's really good. I mean, I really like my preferred style of techno is deep techno, you know. Yeah. Real hedonistic stuff with a lot of sound design elements going into it. Mm. And he's brilliant at that. Mm. Where's he from, man? I don't I don't know much about him. He's German. I don't know if he's from Germany originally, um, but he's based in Berlin now. Okay. Um, but yeah, everything he does is wicked, mm. as far as I'm concerned, you know. Maybe Rod had as well, you know, they're also another guy that I really like a lot, you know, and they they work together as well. Right. Uh, just very deep hedonistic techno. Yeah, yeah. So the track you chose is Son. Son, Son yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah. just again, it's nothing specific about that track. It's just one of his, I just really like it. And yeah. uh, like yeah. I said, all, all of his stuff though, really, it's worth checking out. If no one's listening mm. to the show, has never heard of him. Definitely mm. go just put his name yeah. in and, and see what comes up because it's no, all I need to I need to explore a bit more now you've, you've yeah. introduced that to me. Because yes, as you say, it's that real deep atmospheric kind of Yes. But there's a exactly. groove there too, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Headphones yeah. on as well. I mean in the club obviously it would sound amazing, but you know, it's just really, really good stuff. It you know, absorbs you. Freddie Fresh. Freddie Fresh, yeah. Afterthought, afterthought. Yeah, that's just basically just one of his more recent releases that we put out mm. on EPM. Uh, mm. Again, he's got an album coming out that uh, we're going to put out uh, over the, I think in September it's planned to come out. Okay. Um, but, I mean, yeah, this is one of his more recent tracks. That, I mean, Freddie is somebody I've known for a very long time as well. Again, harking back to when I was doing bookings, because I did his bookings back in the 90s.
this is the hacker and you're listening to base agenda radio You know, he got famous for the big beat stuff because obviously he did a collaboration with Fat Boy Slim and uh, I think yeah. in the 2000s he got really popular with this big beaty sound. But that, that was the track he did with Fat, uh, Norman Cook? Uh, it's called Bad About a Swing. You know, he used to do techno before that. But then he's also, mm. he plays piano and he, so he knows a lot about melodies and, and, he's, and he's an amazing producer on like this mental uh modular gear you know and he's just really good at tweaking those sounds and these mm. pretty little melodies he always comes up with and this is just one of those tracks where yeah. he's just got this beautiful melody going in these in, in the track but he's got many of them you know and i said what well, keep an eye out for his album in the, in september i think and oh, this cool. is kind of what i want to base it around you know he's going back to that kind of sound that he's, he's a real electronica sound that he's got there's an album he released years ago that I, I organised with him for a UK label that doesn't exist in that anymore. Mm. But this album called Watch That Sound. And if you check that album out, it's all just this stuff. Mm, okay. And it's, it's wicked. Really, really good. So I wanted mm. to go back. I think that came out in around 2005. And I wanted to do another album like that, um, that he put for that kind of music. So this is right. what forthcoming album. So that's what's coming up. Yeah, yeah. No, okay, like cool. That. I know some of his tracks I've listened to again more recent stuff. I think that the track he did with you on the album again was oh yeah, quite old school electro kind of vibe. Yeah, going on as well. it was killer. Really enjoyed really. that. Yeah, I just wanted to try and make that as diverse as possible, really, because I've been going through quite a hard time in my life at that moment. My mum had just passed away, oh, and so it felt like a big sort of milestone that I wanted to try to put an album out I mean slightly in the vein of Poobas as well because you know the Poobas stuff is always very varied and there isn't yeah. really any specific style yeah, and yeah. that also I wanted to try to kind of showcase a lot of the different styles of music that I've been into mm. you know since getting into the music itself so that mm. was kind of those two things combined yeah you know so it's a bit all over the place um, but that was for a reason and uh, yeah. yeah it was great to do a track with him and now I've done a track with him for his album now, so that will be on that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that nice one. Good, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Which, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely do.
So um, yeah, I've got this collaboration coming out with Freddie. That'll be uh, sort of in September on his album. Oh. Um, I'm going to do some more tracks with Danny, Danny Rodriguez. Um, nothing really set yet. We're starting to work on some new music at the moment. Mm. So you'll definitely watch this space for some more music on with me and him, probably towards the end of the year or beginning of the new year. And then eventually, yeah, I want to get up to um, releasing a new album um, by spring next year. I'll be 50 then, so I want to try to put that another again, another milestone. That's it. And I want to have this album done for that. So it won't be just a techno album. It'll be definitely other styles of music. Nothing. There'll be some other collaborations on there with it for sure. But I mean, it will be a bit more focused than that. The other one, because the other one has really went all over the shop, you know. Uh, I've got the track now. What's that dub track on there? Man? Oh, really? You like that one? No, that's quite a. Uh, is it uh, Fort Road? Yeah, it's Fort Road. That's a place in Tottenham. And uh, okay. and that's Man. my mate from when that came on. I was playing the label. I played the the thing in se- the album in sequence. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, oh man, <laughs> fucking bass. That's a real wild card. That one. I just wanted to have something related to that. Again, coming back to why I made that why I made that album so diverse. Being that I wanted mm. to be a lot to do with my life, and with my mum had just passed away, so I was reflecting a lot back on my life leading up to that point and the musical genres I've been into and. Obviously, as I said, dub and right. reggae and dancehall were such an influence in Tottenham. And so mm. Thorpe Road is a place, is a street in Tottenham that I used to hang out on a lot. And my mate who's actually doing the vocals on there is was the guy who lived on that road. <laughs> I used to hang oh, around, around like his it. house all the time, you know, so kind of yeah. wild to do that. Oh, so it's a real kind of memory lane exactly. type thing exactly. going I mean, yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the Love All You yeah, Hate nice, It track, and then for me that meant more personal than anything else is why that was on there. Great and varied selections from Oliver Way. Fantastic stuff. Great interview. Really enjoyed having a chat with him. Obviously a man to watch for all the reasons he's explained in the show. Bit more from him now as we go into guest mix mode. Fantastic electro mix recorded in November last year in the Netherlands. At an event put together by Nur, Nor, Nacht and RX Mode. Some real belters in this. Enjoy it.
sound of underground. This is the 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 sound of underground. Miami is the home of the motherfucking bass. Detroit, Motor City is always in the place. Germany can't get see is where it all began. Craft working man, but I had a master plan. Miami is the home of the motherfucking bass. Detroit, Motor City is always in the place. From Disco Bay to the UK, Electro pound the ground. B-Boys prepare for battle cause this is the sound of underground.
Helena Hauf und ihr hört Bass Agenda Radio.
great mix from Oliver Way. Love and thanks out to him again for taking part in the show. As always, the show is going to be available first on patreon.com slash bass agenda over the weekend, where you can download the full episode, get the track list, get a voice free version of the episode. And if I get time, I'll probably put the techno section of the episode out as a single mix on there as well. Lots of great projects from Oliver and involving Oliver in the pipeline. Make sure you check them out as they turn up. The show will be added to the archive at some point next week on soundcloud.com slash agenda and on the iTunes podcast feed, etc. I'll be back next month with a new show for you where my guest will be Cert. Just sorting out a good guest mix for that one as well. More news on that soon. In the meantime, thanks for listening. Have a good weekend. Cheers.